everybody, welcome to Coffee with Kelly week 208. I'm so excited because Easter is this weekend and we get to uh, celebrate his resurrection. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Um, that is if you're watching in sync with us. Today is Tuesday if you're watching it and um, Easter is this Sunday. So on Friday we will gather as a community to walk down a uh, street in uh, Temecula and honor uh, Good Friday and then Sunday celebrate his resurrection. So I'm really excited. So I had to bring my little Easter stuff. But sadly, my story and my devotion actually has nothing to do with Easter. But we could not let this week go by without wishing you a happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. And again, he is risen indeed. So uh, the title of my devotion this morning is called Read the Fine Print. And so let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Father, for what you did on the cross. We thank you for um, your death, burial, and ultimately your resurrection. And because you live, we can live too. And so we look forward to celebrating this weekend all over the world, Lord, as we celebrate what you have done for us and the miracle of the resurrection, Lord. And so um, I pray now that your spirit would um, I don't know, burn your words into our heart, uh, speak to us, encourage us, exhort us, admonish us, Lord, by your spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have, and do you even like my yellow cup? Look how color-coordinated we are. So I have an interesting tor story to tell you that I learned about this week. I took the time, so most of you guys know that I had a knee replacement six months ago. So before I took, <coughs> um, before you get the surgery, you have to read all the paperwork, sign all the paperwork, blah, blah, blah. And who reads the fine print, really, of stuff like that? Nobody really does, right? All the things you have to read. But for some odd reason, I took the time to kind of glance through, hop, skip, and jump through the fine print. And something kind of stuck out to me and really stayed in my mind. So it, it said something like, you can't do dental work uh, six months before or after you have a knee replacement. It didn't say why, but it mentioned that. And I always just thought hmm, that that was kind of weird. So, um, but I remembered it and it stuck in my, in my head. And so I really need my teeth cleaned and I'm getting ready to have another knee replacement in the summer. And so I'm like, I need to get in at this time. And so I called and made the appointment. And as I'm chatting with the lady on the phone, I said something like, yeah, you know, I uh, had a knee replacement and I was reading on the fine print and said something about not having my uh, any dental work done. And she's like, wait, what? You had a knee replacement? And I'm like, uh, yes. Why? Is this really a thing? And she says, oh my gosh, yes, it's a thing. She says that... Um, when they clean your teeth more than any other dental work, more than a root canal or a cap or whatever, when they clean your teeth, more bacteria is stirred up in a teeth cleaning than any other procedure and that it can affect your knee or any artificial thing you have in here and cause infection. And I said, wait, what? And I'm like, this is a real thing? She's like, oh yes, in fact, so real. She said, six months should be fine, but I'm going to send you a paper for you to give to your surgeon for him to okay it. It's probably so that they're not going to get sued if I get sick, but um, he might want to give you an antibiotic before you come in to prevent an infection that teeth cleaning will do to my knee. And I thought, this is the weirdest thing ever. And honestly, reading the fine print that day was very important in this case, right? How often do we not read it? Whether it's on a credit card agreement, you know, if you read the fine print on a tampon box, you will never use them because you think you're gonna die. Whatever med you get, we're, we're lucky we don't die, right? And they list out everything that could happen to you, so you just kind of stop reading it. So anyways, that kind of story, uh, that incident that happened this week just kind of stuck in my head. And I started thinking about how this little bit of bacteria can infect something else as it travels through the body. And I immediately thought of what Paul said, you know, I'm kind of weird, but I immediately thought of what Paul said in Galatians 5.9, where he said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. 
Now in the um, NIV, it says a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. Now the NLT says this false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. Now Paul uses this metaphor that would be familiar to them, uh, they bakers and such, and they use yeast, um, and so it would a familiar analogy. But he used it co to compare the effects of false teaching within the church. Just a little yeast makes bread rise, and a little bit of false teaching will quick, quickly spread and can infiltrate the heart and the mind of believers and contaminate the entire church, which was what was happening in Paul's, you know, is uh, warning against that. Beware, you got to stick to the truth, because as false teachers come in and twist and twist, it, it spreads like wildfire. It spreads like leaven and can infect the whole church. Just like bacteria that can be stirred up and affect anything that is especially vulnerable, in my case, like a false knee. When we aren't reading the word, perhaps, I guess, avoiding the fine print or reading things we don't like to read you know, or don't like to hear, uh, the part that points out our sins, the point that calls us to repentance, or the part about the necessity for us to love one another and forgive one another, if we just choose to stay in the Psalms because they're fun um, or whatever, uh, if we stay away from the fine print, we can become vulnerable to heresy, to sin. We can easily be swayed and tossed to and fro so easily. In fact, I met a young lady this week who had deep roots in the occult as she was brought up. Um, but under the name of Jesus, and because she was so vulnerable because of her situation, those untruths and heresies and blasphemies that she was taught took root in her heart, and now it's so hard to discern the truth because it contaminated her heart and her spirit, and she's working so hard to root that out. So the truth of God's word is so important, especially the small print. All of the Bible, all of the Old Testament, all of the New Testament, the easy reading and the not so easy reading. But besides heresy and false teaching, sin is like that, right? Paul used the same analogy when talking to the Corinth, uh, the Corinth church um, in 1 Corinthians 5 2. He says, your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Clean out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened. Paul is stressing here that sin, particularly pride that he's talking about, will also corrupt. The believers in the Corinth church were tolerating sin in the church. If you remember, there was a young man involved in sexual sin and they weren't doing anything about it. They were looking the other way. They were tolerating it. And you and I may be tempted to tolerate sin in our lives without even noticing how it corrupts us. We must look at things different in order to tolerate it in our own lives, right? Um, reduce our standards of holiness, be okay with things, rationalize it away and look away, right? Um, we can be tempted to do that. And yet it, it's such a danger. That infection, as we do those things to rationalize our sin or um, to think something's not so bad, look what others are doing, that infection, infection can spread and corrupt us, which, because we are all part of one body, as Paul loves to talk about, you're the thumb, you're the hand, you're the elbow, we are all part of one body. So when someone is in sin, it corrupts the entire lump the entire church. We all know people who were really walking with the Lord, had strong, unwavering uh, convictions. As in as time went on, they got lax, whether it was because of their own sin and desires or um, they wanted to be okay with someone that they love. So they began to tolerate or accept that sin, not in a way that we're called to love one another despite the sin, but in the way that is it really that bad kind of way and begin to tolerate it. You know, remember back in the garden with Adam and Eve, the serpent had said to Eve, did God really say this? Did God really mean that? 
So that seed of doubt was planted in, uh, in her, and her and Adam fell for it. We must keep a clean slate, live in a state of confession and repentance and self-examination. We must be aware that we are sinners and not allow ourselves to deceive ourselves and believe the lies of the enemy, that God doesn't care how we live, that God doesn't care about our sin, because he does. It affects ourselves. It affects uh, those we work with. It affects the testimony um, of the Lord himself. I think of the example of Demas who ministered with Paul, but then Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.10, uh, like he was talking about who was with him, but he said, For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. We don't know why he went to Thessalonica. Maybe he was from there. We don't know what part of the world in that sense Demas fell for. Paul was careful not to say what part of the world grabbed his heart, whether it's fame or fortune or the desires of our heart. It also doesn't say if he came back to the Lord. I'd love to think he did. But somehow the love of the world had slipped into his heart in some way, which spread, and it infected his relationship with God, and he deserted Paul. At one point in uh, Philema 24, they had been co-laborers. That's what Paul calls him, implying that they worked together, sharing work and responsibility. In fact, in Philema, in Philema 24, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, in where it said that Demas for, forsook him, the word forsook in Greek means to abandon, to desert, to leave in straits, to leave helpless, to leave in the lurch, or to let someone down. That's what Demas did. This leaven, this untreated leaven had spread, and he had left, and Paul was warning the church this had happened because they, Paul didn't want his sin to affect all the rest of the believers. We must read the fine print of Scripture so we aren't surprised by the consequences of our sin. Um, by the drifting away as we choose to live in a sin or the hardening of our heart. We need to understand what sin does to us, what it does to the body of Christ, and how it grieves the heart of God. Read the fine print. I love how the dentist said, you know, that I should take an antibiotic first to avoid affection. To me, uh, th that meant uh, like to guard my knee, to guard myself from infection. And so in this context, I thought about how we are to put up safeguards and avoid, avoid the appearance of evil and have good boundaries so we aren't affected, right? I think of Proverbs 4.23, which says, guard your heart because in it are the issues uh, spring out the issues of life. We need to guard our heart. It's like taking antibiotics, really. So read the word, all of it, the fine print. Understand the truth. Know the truth. Make sure you aren't harboring some sin, some leaven in your heart because you think God doesn't really mind or because it's safe or because it's comfortable and it has become part of you. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Get someone to hold you accountable and do what needs to be done to avoid any leaven from spreading. In scripture, it's important to note, though, that the use of leaven is used once in the New Testament as a positive thing. Jesus himself said in Matthew 13, 33, um, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, and he uses it to illustrate the ever-increasing, ever-spreading, influence of his kingdom in the world. And that's such a great illustration of leaven. And so let's take that one to heart. Let's spread the leaven, the gospel of Jesus, and watch it spread through our families and our friends and our churches and our communities and the world and watch the kingdom grow. And so think about leaven this week. And as we count down to Easter, Self-examine. Make sure that all the leaven is cleansed out of your heart and your life, especially as we anticipate this weekend of Easter. And then as we use the opportunities to share the good news 
of what this weekend is about and watch it take root and spread and share the gospel and watch the kingdom grow on this earth and into eternity. So God bless you guys. Have a great countdown to Easter. I love you. Um, I love Jesus. I pray that you do too. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. And I will see you next week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you did on the cross. Lord, we thank you for uh, the resurrection. Lord, I pray that we truly would self-examine and not let the leaven of false teaching and the leaven of sin grow in our hearts, Lord. I pray that we would drive it out, that we would be intentional of living holy and pure lives before you. God, that we wouldn't um, affect our own testimony in the world, that uh, I know me on staff, that my leaven wouldn't affect the testimony of our church and our community, and ultimately that the leaven in our hearts wouldn't affect the body of Christ as a whole. We love you, we worship you, and we give you our day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Happy Easter.